Welcome. This is Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 8th of January, 2024. Thanks for being here. Today, we've got upcoming calendar. We'll talk about news, review action items, uh, community activity, including artifact bandwidth reduction and Com contributor summit, uh, brief on Java, Java support plan, and then governance topics. I'd like to bring up the the Jira system that we recovered, the attribution request from JFrog, Azure credits donation. Oh, I've got Damien there. I shouldn't. And AWS credits donation request. Any other topics that we need to be sure are on the agenda for today? Okay, then let's look first at the calendar. So weekly release 2.440 is scheduled to come out tomorrow. And as part of the next story, it looks good as a candidate to be chosen as the LTS baseline. LTS baseline will be selected Wednesday. And we've got a release candidate that will also be out Wednesday for 2.426.3. It's scheduled to release January 24th. Uh, we've got an upcoming major event, February 2nd, there will be a Jenkins Contributor Summit in Brussels, Belgium. And looking forward to seeing everybody there and being face-to-face. FOSDEM will be February 3rd and February 4th. John Mark Mason is coordinating the agenda for the Contributor Summit, and we'll review later in the meeting some of the details of it. Any questions on the calendar? Okay, let's look at the, the other items then. So on the news side, we're delighted that the Microsoft Azure donation of $40,000 is being actively used. We've consumed the first $1,000 of the donation. Uh, thanks to Microsoft for donating. DigitalOcean is also sponsoring the Jenkins project for 2024 with $20,000 of cloud services. Very grateful to both those sponsors. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now we had action items on license policy and phrasing changes. Basel, would you like to give us a summary there of the, of the results? Sir, I think we were all done with this topic in the sense that we've taken a few actions, one of which was to explicitly allow public domain dedications and public domain equivalent licenses, which solves the issue regarding the JSON library, which is uh, released under a public domain dedication. Um, and in addition to that, we've clarified that uh, library plugins uh, should ideally use the license of the wrapped library unless they have significant production code contributions. And that's a soft recommendation, not a requirement, um, simply designed to eliminate ambiguity uh, around these library plugins. And there are a few of them that have recently been updated to match these recommendations as well. So we, we're not only uh, recommending this, but have actually gone through and aligned reality with our recommendations in several cases. Um, and I think that's it. I don't think we have any other open questions regarding licensing. Those were the two biggest questions, and I think they've both been resolved by now. Thanks very much. Any questions from others? I feel like they are they are done, just as you said. All right. Next topic then was an attribution page for the attribution entries for the downloads page that actually I think has has mutated to become a, a sponsors concept. Anything you want to report there? I've put a bunch of items later for for further conversation, Basel, unless you'd like to give some details here. No, I don't have an update on this task, um, but I think I do. I think I am unblocked to start working on this. So it is on my to do list, and hopefully I'll have some progress the next time we meet. Great, thank you. Now, I do have one item. It is that Red Hat is no longer a member of the Continuous Delivery Foundation. We had kept them on our top level page at www.jenkins.io because they were a they were a premier member at the at the Continuous Delivery Foundation. As of December 31, they exited from that. And I had talked with the Red Hat representative during a CDF 
technical oversight committee meeting and said, I thought that would mean we would need to remove their logo from our top level page. They're just, they're not contributing enough to justify being at that high level that we put GitHub and JFrog and, and others. Uh, I'm open to other comments from others on the board in terms of my thought was we take a short term step, remove that logo from that root page so that won't derail the long term steps that Basel is going to take and lead us through the sponsors improvement. Any objections from others? Yeah, that sounds fine. And presumably the calculus will match when we make the sponsors page and they would be at a different level than, you know, the highest level. Once we right. create that page. Yeah. And, and there certainly are still Red Hat employees contributing. So it's not that they're, they're all contribution has ceased, but cash contribution has ceased. And so I think we need to bring them down a little bit. Uli, your comment? Yeah, I think it's fine as well. And I'm wondering what did they tell you when you talked to them? It's, is this okay for them? That they they, they agreed that it made sense that we would remove it. Yes. So yeah. they were they were not dismayed. They I think they were a little feeling a little bit dismayed that they were not able to continue with the continuous delivery foundation. The person that was talking in a did not seem terribly thrilled about that, but had to do what the company had decided. Okay. So and he he seemed very understanding that if you're not contributing, we we can't leave you on the sponsors page. Super. Any other questions on the, the sponsors topic? Okay, the next topic was me hanging my head again that I haven't submitted the Jenkins.io pull request to combine subprojects. I'm prone, given the long life of this, should I just drop it from the list and admit I'm never going to do it? Because at this point, I've got so many other things that are higher priority. It's not making progress. Any objections from others if I just drop it and say, Mark's not going to get it done? It's okay. Remove it. Great. Thank you. Done. And then Kevin had one last item on the on retiring the Chinese Jenkins site. And here again, Mark's the problem. Kevin's done his actions, but I've got to do a Kubernetes setup. Uh, we've had the discussion with, or Kevin, do you want to give any further details on that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, we've talked to Damien. Damien's aware of where we're at. Um, he's offered time to look at it. We just want to make sure that Mark and I line up on everything before we take that back to Damien and make sure that uh, we have the right questions to ask for him when we do have that session again. Um, it's, I've been out for the last week or so dealing with medical stuff, so I'm just kind of getting back up to speed, but um, this is something that we're going to be picking up soon. So. Thanks, Kevin. Any questions on any of the action items? Okay, on the community activity side, the Artifactory Bandwidth Reduction Project came to us back in, well, it was early 2023 when Artifactory, when JFrog asked us, hey, please reduce the 50 terabytes a month of bandwidth that the Jenkins project is using. And we took some initial steps to reduce from 50 to 25 to 30. And those initial steps were successful, but they came back to us and said, hey, could you please reduce further because there are some configuration things that you can improve that will help and still deliver good value to, to Jenkins developers. That tuning has been, has been done and we have no traffic to the two problem repositories that we had before. So no significant traffic there, good win. We've still got some tuning that needs to be done uh, in terms of the orphans local repository has to be removed. We did, the infra team did reset the caching proxies this morning and seemed to be okay, but we were trying to deal with some surprises that Alex Brandis detected over the weekend that I detected over the weekend that are still working through. We're not sure if all of those are related to artifacts or if it's just a subset, we're, we'll keep working it. Any questions on the that project? I think the orphans was finally removed this morning, so that that task. Oh, has oh been that was done. done. Oh, good, great, thank we're you. We're very close to the finish, I think. As long as we can get to the bottom of these remaining operational issues, I think the configuration looks good from my side. 
Excellent. Thanks, Basel. Thanks very much. Next topic then is the Contributor Summit, February 2nd. So we have 20 plus confirmed attendees, including four of the five Jenkins board members and most Jenkins officers. So really, it's going to be a great session. We're looking forward to it. John Mark Mason is coordinating the agenda, and he's proposed this rough outline as an agenda to fit within the about six or seven hours that we'll have together, a board report. So a board member, it could be me, it could be Alex, Uli, Basel, any, any one of us is a board member. Then infrastructure report from Damien. Release officer, we're not sure who will do it. I'm still trying to find a way to get Tim Jacome there, but he's not sure he can get funding to travel. Um, then Kevin will do the docs officer report and Alyssa, the events officer report. Vadak Falone will be there and talk about his security report. Then I was assuming that if Tim can't be there, I'll talk about the user experience SIG. I'd really like him there because we would like to have a discussion about user experience later, and he's crucial for that. Then Vincent Latomba of CloudBees has agreed to do a presentation on the kinds of changes that they've had to propose in Jenkins for high availability and high scalability support. Um, we've also got a topic on blue ocean deprecation. What does it mean to eventually someday in the future deprecate the blue ocean plugin? Specifically, Demian Deportal has some usability challenges that he's worried about that he wants to use for a, a, a discussion, and that would lead us towards user experience evolution. Then if time allows, I'd love to talk about Java support plan, but if it doesn't, I'm fine if we skip it. Th those are the ideas now. Any questions or concerns there or other ideas you'd like to suggest? Okay, great. So if you have ideas, and one of the thoughts we've been having is, can could we do some group coding exercises as well? We think we would do those likely after the, the, the bulk of the presentations are done, but we think it could be a good experience. We're going to have Stefan Speaker there. We're going to have Uli's going to be there. Basel will be there. Um, Alex Brandis will be there. We've got a bunch of people there who could who could really benefit by some time together coding. Next topic then is just a status report that Java support plan continues to evolve, but I've got a bunch of work still to do on the what are the details of it. And I apologize that I'm behind schedule. I hope to get to it this week. Governance topics. Now, here's the the bigger one. We had a, an episode on December 6th where uh, a thousand plus issue reports were harmed by a, a spammer. And we ultimately decided we needed to restore from backup. So we restored from backup. That's done. And you can read about it. I've still got to look at some of the things that we that arrived on the system between December 6 and December 18 to see if any of them need to be restored. The security team did a specific bring back of things that were relevant to them. There are some other issue, issue tickets that were reported then that I need to look at. Any questions on that JIRA, JIRA recovery problem? I don't think it's that high of priority to get every single last piece of data restored. I mean, if it's too much trouble, then you know I wouldn't be opposed to just uh, dropping it and saying that this is good enough. We restored the bulk of the changes, so that's fine with me. Yeah, and and you've described exactly how I'm approaching it. I'm acting like I want to look at those things and see which of them might be serious risks in terms of did we have a an important bug report that arrived there that that has been misplaced. Otherwise, you're right. I think we're going to just leave it, leave it as is. Good. Next topic then was the, the sponsors page, the attribution request. And here we'd had two different proposals, one from Basel for various naming, the other from me on naming. Are there any things we need to discuss here, Basel? No, I don't think so. I'm hoping to make some progress on this this month, so... Hopefully, I'll have something more concrete to talk about soon. Great. Excellent. All right. 
Then the last two items are the Azure credits. There, it's me talking, not Damien. Uh, the Azure credits, we've now cons confirmed that we've spent the first $1,000. So thanks to Damien for not disrupting our use of Azure billing processes and still being able to, to take this in. We expect that that will accelerate because we think that we will spend about 3K a month from the from the Azure donation based on our, our predicted consumption. We'll watch it and see. We're, we're thrilled. It's kept us under budget overall and clearly under budget compared to what we had proposed to the CDF for budget. And then the last item was before the Christmas break, before the end of 2023, I submitted a request to AWS for a donation to the Jenkins project. Uh, they said that they would reply within 30 days. So I hope that by end of January, 2024, we'll know if, if AWS is willing to donate to Jenkins as well. Any other topics we need to include on our agenda for, for today? All right. Thanks, everybody.